Hello, uh, in this lecture, uh, we study the natural logarithmic function. Uh, this is uh, section 6.2 star, the darker pages. We're going with this option, which is much better. Uh, and you can see the definition right here in the green box. For every positive uh, number x, we define ln x to be this integral, with changing upper limit. Uh, in Calc 1, you study integrals with changing upper limit. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus, fundamental theorem of calculus, part 1, which says that uh, if you have a continuous function fx, uh, continuous function f of x, and you define gx to be such integral from a to x, ft dt, where a is some number from the domain, then uh, the derivative of this uh, integral exists, g prime x exists, and equals fx. So this integral provides one antiderivative for the function f, and uh, this derivative is still no matter what is a. If you change a, you just get different and the derivative is differing by constant. Uh, so using this uh, property, we can differentiate the logarithm. Uh, and the uh, natural log x prime will be 1 over x. The definition we're giving here uh, tells you the derivative immediately. This is very convenient. And uh, how to differentiate the composition if you have natural log of some function u of x uh, and we differentiate uh, this uh, composition we follow the chain rule so this will be the dif differentiation with respect to u 1 over u and then u prime this is the chain rule so the derivative here is u prime x over u of x that's how we differentiate logarithm of something. For example, if we have uh, natural log of sine x, the derivative will be 1 over sine x times sine x prime, which is uh, actually cosine x. So we have cosine x over sine x and this is cotangent one a simple example of derivative now we studied the logarithm uh, because it has uh, three extremely important properties or laws the laws of logarithm here are the properties uh, first one if you take uh, logarithm ax where ax are two positive numbers this will be logarithm a plus logarithm x so a and x are two positive numbers logarithm of product is sum of logarithms second property is logarithm of quotient x over let's say b will be logarithm x minus logarithm b and b is also positive uh, logarithm of quotient is difference of logarithms the third law called exponential law if you have logarithm a to power x this is x natural log a uh, these are the properties which make the logarithm a very unique function, and that's why people work with the logarithm. Why natural logarithm? If you have studied logarithms before, you know that they have different bases, and the base of this natural logarithm is a very special number. Uh, it's number e, which is called the uh, order's number. This is how we come to it. Uh, we just found that the logarithm has 
derivative 1 over x, which is strictly positive, so the logarithm is strictly increasing. It's invertible function. Uh, it has inverse. Inverse exists, which is the natural exponential function. Uh, if uh, y equals natural log of x, the exponential function, this is one way to write it, exponential y equals x, brings y back to x. Or we can also write this way, exponential y equals x. We shall study this function with details further. Now, uh, we shall see that uh, the range of the logarithm is the entire number line. The domain is uh, uh, from 0 to infinity, uh, but the range is the entire number line. And if we take number 1 as image, the original for number 1 is number e. So, definition of this uh, number e, uh, logarithm logarithm e equals 1. So this is called Euler number. Uh, and the value of e is approximately 2.7. It's an irrational number. Uh, it, uh, you can call it base of the natural logarithm. It has this property here in the box. Uh, pay attention how you pronounce Euler. Euler. Okay, moving further, uh, I want to show you uh, a proof of the first property. Uh, this property logarithm ax equals logarithm a plus logarithm x. It's good to know how such things come to life. Where are we getting this property from? Uh, proof. Let's see how we get this property. Take the function fx to be logarithm ax and differentiate f prime logarithm ax prime. Remember, we go to the chain rule ax prime and below prime here and ax in denominator. The derivative ax is just a. And over ax, we can reduce by a, it's 1 over x. So we see that the derivative of this function is the same like the derivative of the logarithm. Uh, so natural log ax and natural log x have the same derivative, so they differ by constant. That's what you know from calc 1. If two functions have the same derivative, they differ by a constant. So we can write this equation. Logarithm ax equals logarithm x plus c, some constant. And it's very easy to evaluate this constant if you take uh, x to be 1. How do you get uh, logarithm 1 is 0? Uh, this uh, comes from the definition immediately. Uh, logarithm 1 is 0 because this integral here will be uh, 0. Let me write here again. Logarithm 1 is integral from 1 to 1, 1 over t dt equals 0. Uh, so logarithm 1 is 0, and from this equation we get logarithm a equals 0 plus c, so c equals natural log of a, uh, replace it here in this equation, and you have logarithm ax equals logarithm x plus logarithm a, which is our property. That's our property. You can swap logarithm a, logarithm x, doesn't matter which comes first. Okay, the other properties are proved absolutely the same way. And uh, you can see this in the book, or you can try to do it yourself. Now, I want to 
mention uh, the range again of this logarithm. Uh, limit natural log x when x grows to infinity. This becomes infinity. This is one divergent integral. Uh, so when x moves from towards infinity, the logarithm will take all possible positive values. And when x moves towards zero, what is this? x moves towards zero with positive values. This will be negative infinity. Uh, how to, to see this? We can assign to x some sequence of values. Let's say x is uh, 1 nth when uh, n grows to infinity. And then uh, logarithm x will be logarithm 1 over n will be logarithm 1 minus logarithm n will be negative logarithm n. And because n grows to infinity, logarithm n grows to infinity, and this grows to minus infinity. Put the place of logarithm n infinity, get minus infinity. So this is uh, another limit. Uh, so the entire number line is described by the logarithm. From minus to plus infinity. Here is the graph of the logarithm. Uh, let's put here the ordinate. This is the x-axis. Here is the y-axis. Here is 0. Logarithm of 1 is 0, so it goes through this point. To the left, it goes to minus infinity. To the right, it goes to plus infinity. That's the graph of y equals natural log x. Uh, it grows to plus infinity relatively slowly, as we shall see later, but it actually grows to plus infinity. Uh, so let's write again domain natural log x. Uh, let's write this way, without x here. Domain natural log is 0 infinity. Range natural log is the entire number line. So these are the most important properties. Logarithm of 1 is 0. Logarithm special number E is 1. The three laws, the rule for differentiation, all these things are very, very important. They are used throughout calculus, differential equations, in physics everywhere. Now, I want to do some examples with derivatives. Some practice. Uh, look at this. We are given the function fx, which is uh, natural log one such expression, have expression x fifth power, square root, here x cubed, cosine x. Uh, we want to find the derivative, but we're not differentiating directly by the chain rule. We have to use the properties and then differentiate. So the problem is stated this way. Simplify and uh, then find f prime. How to simplify? We simplify by using the properties of the logarithm. So fx, first we consider here a product of two things, x fifth power and this radical. So this will be natural log x fifth power plus natural log square root x cubed cosine x. Then we can use the exponential property to bring this 5 here in front. And we can do the same here because this will be logarithm x cubed cosine x power 1 half. So the next step we write fx equals 5 times, oh, let's make a better 5. Okay, here is a beautiful 5. Natural log x plus one half natural log x cubed 
cosine x. Well, this is simple. Now we have no radicals. Uh, but we can simplify further because we have a product here also. And continuing this work, 5 logarithm x plus 1 half. And here I have natural log x cubed plus natural log cosine x. You think this is the last step? No, we can still go further. Logarithm x cubed. We deal the same way like with x fifth power. So this will be 3 times logarithm x. And here is the function f simplified completely. 5 times natural log x plus this will be 3 halves natural log x and 1 half natural log cosine x. We cannot simplify this further. And at this point we differentiate. f prime will be 5 times 1 over x, distribute the prime, 3 halves 1 over x, plus 1 half, and differentiating cosine, logarithm of cosine, remember it's uh, cosine x prime over cosine x, that's the rule. Here on the top we had to put negative sine x and here is the derivative. Uh, by the way we can add the first two terms, 5 plus 3 halves, 5 plus 3 halves, this will be 10 halves plus 3 halves, 13 halves, 1 over x, just put x in the denominator. And there is a negative sign here, one half sine over cosine that just tangent. Look, this is a derivative. Very simple. Uh, the original function was quite difficult, but the derivative here is quite simple. Okay. Another example. Uh, Suppose, let's go example two. Suppose fx is natural log sine fifth power x. Again, simplify and find derivative. Well, that's quite uh, short work here. We can write fx using the exponential property 5 in front logarithm sine x and then f prime will be 5 times sine prime on top will be cosine x over sine x and this is uh, 5 times cotangent 5 times cotangent x. So we found this derivative very quickly. Here is something uh, uh, different. Example 3. Suppose we had a function g of t which is square root 1 plus natural log of t. Differentiate this function. Now we cannot use properties of the logarithm. We have to differentiate the radical. And when you differentiate the radical, it's good to write it as power. So we write this 1 plus natural log t. t is the variable, power 1 half. And we use here the extended power rule. If you have some function u to some power m, the derivative is m u m minus first power u prime. That's the extent power rule. So m here is one half. g prime t will be one half, one plus natural log t subtracting one, negative one half, and then we differentiate 
1 plus natural log t. U is 1 plus natural log t in this work, and m is 1 half. This derivative here, one derivative, uh, derivative one is zero, and it's just one over t. So g prime t uh, will be there will be t in the denominator, one over two t, and one plus natural log t negative one half, which you can write like uh, in the denominator square root. It will can be written this way, 2t square root 1 plus natural log t. And this is our derivative. Okay. Another example. I want to show you a special technique which is called logarithmic differentiation. Suppose you have the function fx which is x to power sine x. How to define such powers? Uh, we shall see a little bit later, but suppose we know how to define it, so we have defined it and we have this uh, special interesting function where x appears in two places. If you want to differentiate, you cannot use power rule and chain rule also doesn't help because you cannot differentiate both at the same time. Uh, so here is our special technique. It's called uh, uh, logarithmic differentiation. We take logarithms of both sides. Natural log f equals natural log x power sine x. And then using the exponential property, sine x comes in front like that. So the logarithm of f is a relatively simple function, product of two simple functions. And we differentiate both sides. Differentiate both sides of this equation. On the left side, remember we use the chain rule, it will be f prime over f. On the right side, we use product rule. Uh, sine prime will be cosine times natural log x plus sine x logarithm prime is 1 over x. And then we can solve here for f prime f prime will be f multiplied by this expression. Let's make a better f here. Uh, cosine x, natural log x, and I can write here sine x over x. Uh, so f prime replacing f by its equal, x power sine x. All this multiplied by cosine x natural log x plus sine x over x. Look at this. We found the derivative using a special technique logarithmic differentiation. Let me show you one more example. It will be example 5. Suppose you have a complicated function with uh, powers, radicals. Look at this. Uh, let's say x plus 3, uh, fifth power multiplied by x squared minus 1, tenth power. All this divided by, let's say, third root x plus 5. Complicated function. You want to find the derivative. Uh, there are no logarithms here. We cannot simplify and 
like in the first example. But logarithms we can introduce. We can take logarithms of both sides. So we take logarithm of both sides. Logarithm f will be natural log x plus 3 fifth power x squared minus 1 tenth power uh, and uh, this here divided by third root x plus 5. Oh, this is inside the logarithm. And now we can use the properties and simplify this like in the first example. So this will be logarithm, first I can write ratio, natural log x plus 3 fifth power times x squared minus 1 tenth power, all, all, all this minus logarithm third root x plus 5, and then we can use logarithm of product and also bring down the powers. So this becomes five times natural log x plus three, plus 10 times natural log x squared minus one. And uh, this radical here, we shall write x plus five. Sorry about that, my five, not good. x plus five to power one third, so one third can come in front, and this becomes natural log x plus five. And now we differentiate. This is, remember, natural log f. So using the rule for the logarithm, I have to go, now differentiate both sides. On the left side, f prime over f, that's how we differentiate by the chain rule. Here, 5, we don't touch this, 1 over x plus 3. The derivative of x plus 3 is just 1 on top, plus 10. And here, the derivative on the top will be 2x over x squared minus 1, minus 1 third, 1 over x plus 5. And then we can multiply by f both sides. So f prime x is f of x times this thing. I shall rewrite it quickly. 5 over x plus 3 uh, plus 20 x here on the top, x squared minus 1, and minus 1 over 3 x plus 5 like that. Uh, you know what is f, this is our original function, so when you put it here, you find the derivative written, found in a very simple way. We found the derivative in a very simple way. Okay, maybe uh, we should stop here now and continue uh, further. We have to talk about integrals involving the logarithm. This will be something very interesting. So, see you next time. Bye.